welcome to my channel Rue's Life. So this video is part of a collaboration um, for um, Homegrown Food Edible Britain National Gardening Week 2019 and it was instigated this collaboration by Liz Zorab of By the Farm and Erica of Erica's Little Welsh Garden. Check out their channels they're wonderful. They've both been hugely inspirational and supportive um, of my journey of growing um, and I really I, you know thank you to both of you and I can't recommend them highly enough so you know, if you haven't already seen their channels check them out there is such community here on on YouTube and um, you know the, there's, there's too many people I don't want to try and, and list them because I'll inevitably forget somebody and I don't want to do that but you all know who you are and um, you know there's the interaction between us all we're all over the country and um, I've only just recently started my channel in the last couple of months having followed others and the support that I've gained you know just from from doing this channel um, and I've learned so much we all learn from each other and it's just a real wonderful community um, I had an allotment years ago I lived on my own um, in a little cottage and I had an allotment and I really loved the community spirit that came along with that but um, now that you know I'm here at home growing at home I still feel I have that community spirit through um, through YouTube and the, the, the channels and the, the, the community and support that I get there so as I say and um, today's video is part of the collaboration for um, National Gardening Week and to try and encourage and support others to grow uh, there is a playlist of all the videos from all the other channels so go and check that out um, and thank you to, to Liz and to Erica for, for instigating this. Um, so today, in today's video, um, some of you will already be following me, so thank you for that and may have watched my videos. And I'm hoping there might be some people that are new to this as well. Um, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about me um, and why I grow and I'll give you a little tour as well of, of, of the holding and um, what I've got and what we've been doing here. Um, so I've been growing for, for many years now, um, but since moving to the small holding here, um, um, we're in North Wales, um, we've been here now for two years and I've really stepped up my, my growing. Um, I, I mean, I love to grow. I've always loved to have my hands in the soil, even as a little girl, I can remember, you know, growing spring onions and radish and, and flowers. Um, but, uh, you know, I really am starting to, to, to realise my dream here. Um, if it doesn't sound um, you know too, too mushy um, yeah just living in the countryside and and being up to my eyeballs in, in animals and plants is just wonderful um, so I'd like um, as part of this collaboration and with this video to try and encourage others um, that perhaps are already growing to grow and maybe some of you that have not grown anything yet to, 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 to start growing grow your own grow vegetables grow fruit grow food it's a wonderful experience and um, I think the main message I'd really like to sort of to, to get over to, to everybody today is that growing is for everybody young or old and it doesn't matter how much space you've got yes I'm really lucky you know we've got 10 acres here and I've got my polytunnel and we've got a whole paddock that I can designate to but it hasn't always been like that for me and I've lived in a, a variety of places and it doesn't matter whether you live you know in, in a flat or a bed sit or, or, or an estate house or whether you've got an allotment or a plot or, or anything in between everybody can grow from windowsills to pots to hanging baskets to grow bags we can all grow and I think you know that's something I'd really like to get across and even if you think you don't know how you know get a packet of seeds stick them in water them and and see what happens you know you'd be amazed it's wonderful it's a wonderful experience so growing really is for everybody so for me you know the whole process from from planting seeds the anticipation are they going to germinate and when they do you know there's little tiny green spikes that start to shoot up to you know nurturing those plants repotting potting them on and finally either getting them out out into to beds or just into bigger pots or bigger spaces right through to being able to then either enjoy you know pretty flowers or harvesting your own homegrown food it's just a wonderful experience and I, I think everybody should at least even if it's just growing some mustard and cress on a windowsill that journey from planting seeds to harvesting and eating something that you've grown yourself I can't recommend it highly enough so for me the most important reasons and the reasons that I grow 
are taking time out, relaxing, unwinding. Um, here on the small holding, we do have livestock. Um, we've got the sheep, we've got the horses, we've got the chickens, uh, and we have two beautiful greyhounds. Um, love them all. Um, and I also have quite an um, intense job. I'm an out of hours emergency veterinary nurse and I actually manage an out of hours clinic. I work predominantly night shifts. They're long night shifts. They're 14 to 15 hours. And then weekend days and bank holidays, we provide out of hours cover for um, a number of practices in the area. Um, I love my job, but it's very intense and it's very long hours. The animals, I love them, but they're quite physical and sometimes mentally demanding. Growing is none of those things. For me, you know, there's no pressure, there's no stress. If things grow, they grow. If they don't, they don't. Nobody's judging me. It doesn't matter if something doesn't grow. It's not a disaster. You know, what have I, I lost? You know, sometimes it's literally, you know, a few pence on a packet of seeds or some seeds that I've saved myself. So that's the number one reason I grow. Living in the moment, immersing my hands in the soil, being in the fresh air, even when I'm in the polytunnel, we've got the doors open, but being in the outdoors, being around the plants, watching things grow. That's one of the reasons, the main reason I grow is just relaxation and time out. Um, I also like to produce organic food. I know that what I've grown, I know exactly what's gone into the soil. I know exactly what, you know, I don't use pesticides. I, I don't use chemicals, 100% organic. I'm reducing our carbon footprint and I know what we're eating. I'd far rather eat seasonal vegetables um, that I've grown myself than be buying things from the supermarket that have been, you know, shipped across the world and, you know, the, the goodness and the vitamin content has gone from them. Um, some things, you know, once you've grown your own cucumber, there's just no comparison and there's no going back. I would rather only eat cucumbers when they're available to me and I've grown them myself and the same with tomatoes than be able to eat them all year round from the supermarket. You know, they just taste of water. Um, so, yeah, that is just, it's wonderful. It's organic. I know where it's come from. I'm reducing my carbon footprint and I just love to produce produce organic um, food. On top of that, you know, I always grow more than I need, always. It's, I love the growing, but we end up with this mass production of, of, of food. And it's, yes, we can store some of it, um, and we are planning on um, preserving and storing and freezing an awful lot more of our produce. But part of the other reason I love to grow is I love to share. I like to make up little vegetable baskets or boxes um, and fruit baskets and boxes. Uh, we also have the chickens and we always have more eggs than we know what to do with. Gifting organic home produced food to people, seeing their faces, sharing that with family, friends, work colleagues. It's wonderful. And I, I love that, that element of, of, of growing. Um, yeah, so growing, immersing myself in the growing process and sharing. Um, and it's something to talk about. You know, I pop up to the local post office and they're always, oh, how are you getting on in that polytunnel? How are those chickens of yours? Um, and it's a bit of a community thing as well, you know, both locally and as I've already mentioned, you know, across the internet. Um, so that that's why I grow and I would love if just you know one person that hasn't sort of watched my um vlogs before if one person watches this video and, and gets inspired then that that would be wonderful it really really would so i'm going to give you a tour of um our little small holding our little farm and um, i'll show you around um the polytunnel and outside and what we have a little bit about the animals it's quite drizzly and rainy outside but i'll, I'll get as good footage as i can um, so I'll, I'll give you the tour of, of, of the farm and of what I do and what we grow. So here are the horses. This is our little pony. This is our thoroughbred. He's an ex-race horse. Now learning to be a dressage horse. He's been a bit grumpy because he's eating. He's a handsome boy. And this is the main man. This is um, my main competition horse. He's a Shire Cross Thoroughbred. And he's clearly gonna keep his head stuck in his bucket rather than let us have a look at his handsome face. There we are. Hi you, cheeky chops. And here are the chickens. Some of the chickens. 
So they are all ex-battery, which we rescue. And we have a plentiful supply of eggs. It's very, very rewarding rescuing ex-battery chickens. They are usually in quite a state when they come to you, or to us, or to whoever takes them on. Um, they're usually lacking in feathers, quite thin. Some of them are often poorly. They've had a pretty rough life, but uh, I can honestly say, it, of all the animals I've ever owned, taking on expatriate chickens is one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. Watching them go from these frightened little things that, that don't even know how to scratch the ground, watching them grow and their feathers grow and them get a shine to their coats, coats, feathers, and watching them develop their little personalities and characters. You can see them here pecking my feet because they're cheeky. It really is. It's just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And to give them the gift of, of a happy, healthy, relaxed life in an environment where they should be living. Yeah, it's just fabulous. I can highly recommend it to, to absolutely anyone. And this is the area for the wild birds. So we have a bird feeder and a little bird bath. And then at the back of this feeding station and bath area for the wild birds, this was all built from bits and pieces we had already lying around the farm. So this is going to be a, a flowers, flower bed. They've just been planted up. So there are um, sweet peas, sunflower, calendula, and nasturtium in that bed. And I'm really looking forward to hopefully, you know, a real riot of color growing up the back of the um, sort of trellis that we've made there. And this little area just in front of the house, it's just over some um, what were French drains. They're just pots, um, which again, I've planted up with some flowers. So hopefully we'll have plenty of color through the summer months. And then that little cup and saucer pot there, I daren't move it because it'll just fall to pieces, but it's been beautiful. Um, my mum bought that for me as part of my 40th birthday present. So that'll be giving my age away now, um, a good seven years ago. Um, and it has little, daffodils in it and they look beautiful the little dwarf uh, narcissi and they're beautiful and they come every spring um, so I just don't want to move it in case it breaks I'm sure at some point the frost will finish it off but uh, yeah that's always very pretty so again you know I mean this is just an example you know I could grow anything in those pots um, you know so yes we're very fortunate we live on a, on a 10 acre small holding but it could equally just, you know, we could just have the, the little house. This this could be the front of anybody's house or, or uh, you know, this could be as, as much garden as you have. But there's enough space there for pots. And, you you know, you could grow a variety of things in those. You could start things off inside the house on the windowsill. You could have some tomatoes. You could have potatoes, uh, some spring onions, some radish, anything in those pots. So, you know, you really can just grow grow anywhere. It's just utilising space and what you've got and again it doesn't have to cost much a lot of these pots have either been gifted to me at some point or we, we I do get an awful lot from free cycle so you know check out your free cycle network there's one local to everybody and it's amazing what you can pick up and this is another little bed that we made uh, just from some scaffold boards that were already here when we moved in we had a, quite a pile of uh, which essentially you know was rubbish and being left to be got rid of but we've utilized it i love to to recycle to upcycle and that's just a little herb garden and there are some hanging baskets either side with geraniums in which um came from little they weren't expensive there's there's a basket at either side of the woodshed a lot of the hanging baskets i have some i've had for years and, and i had a, a big chunk of um you know, a big pile of them uh, last year, which I picked up um, from FreeCycle. You can get an awful lot. I know I go on about FreeCycle, but you can get an awful lot from FreeCycle. And also from the marketplace on Facebook. Um, you know, have a look. You can get things for next to nothing. The, the things that other people don't want, they don't want a huge amount for. They just want somebody to come and collect them. So, you know, it can, it can be, it doesn't have to cost money. It really doesn't have to cost money. And this is our garden. It was initially a sheep paddock, but we have converted it 
well we've mowed it a lot and we've made it into lawn and um, you can still see there's actually a water trough down the bottom there but the dogs tend to drink out of that and um, there's this beautiful oak tree here and a big pear tree here just duck under the washing line and the area in which the chickens are is actually an orchard so as I've already said we've got apples um, and damson in there and they give us a plentiful supply at harvest time and then I'll just pan around the weather's not brilliant it's a bit drizzly and it's quite chilly today but you can just see that's um, our land it also goes up um, over that hill we've got a, a selection of paddocks which are for the horses and the sheep and these are our pedigree Wiltshire horn ewes we have five and you can hear shouting in the background this is Larry the lamb he is our pet lamb he's desperate for his bottle which I'll give him in a moment he's just living in this little pen for now until he's big enough to go in with the ewes but he, he's just a bit of a baby at the moment um, he doesn't have a mum so we're looking after him but um, our ewes are you know they're quite territorial and he's just a little bit small to be in with them at the moment um, the Wiltshire horns are looking a little bit scruffy at the moment for any of you that don't know um, about this breed they actually don't need shearing they, they grow a very dense but short fleece and then in the spring they actually just shed shed that fleece off which is why they're looking so scruffy but in a couple of weeks they'll look beautiful again and it's one of the advantages of the breed and um, when you have a small flock it's not always easy to get somebody to come in and shear a small flock so it's a real advantage to the breed that they don't need shearing they're actually quite a hardy breed as well they have really good feet so here we are this is the polytunnel this is a place I just love to be and I'll just give you a little tour of what we've got going here. So we've got two pots of tomatoes grown from seed. This is some spinach, which was also grown from seed. Cucumber, runner beans, the lettuce I have bought. Pretty much everything has been grown from seed, but the lettuce I, I have cheated and bought. Peas, broad bean, and then here in these hanging baskets I've got radish, rocket and baby bull's blood beetroot which is lovely for the salad leaves. These are strawberries. In these baskets I have beetroot. Down here at the bottom of this bed uh, courgettes and then nothing actually sprouting yet because I've only just planted these seeds are some spring onion and some chard these are potatoes three rows of potatoes I've got Maris Piper Charlotte and Desiree in this bed and then in this three these three baskets I've got some spring onions and then in the long bed here I've got some radish spinach red onion broad bean this is where I'm going to put some carrots in this space here and then we've got beetroot and white and onion and carrot and there's another little lettuce down there and um, the um, carrots and onions I've deliberately sewn together um, because the carrot fly does not like the smell of any alliums, any onions, so putting them together is a really good way. I also do find as well planting carrots in, in raised beds and also in the polytunnel. I, I do find everything in the polytunnel actually. I have less problems with pests than I would um, or have done in the past growing outdoors. And then in these three baskets, these are tumbling tom tomatoes. These are onion which were grown from seed and there's some chard in that basket there this perpetual spinach for anybody who likes spinach i cannot recommend it highly enough this is coming into its third year now and i grew it from seed and i just keep picking it and picking it and picking it it's wonderful um 
I did consider pulling it up and starting again this year, but it, you know, yes, it, it occasionally bolts, but I just chop those tops off and it just keeps coming. And um, the baby leaves are delicious in salads. And then the more mature leaves I put into meals, you know, we cook with them. This basket here has got um, a geranium in it, which was from Lidl. Again, this basket is battered and old, but it, you know, it works. And, uh, you know, I never throw anything away and I keep things for as long as possible. Um, we've got some more lettuce in that tub. And then there's a couple of Charlotte potatoes in that pot there. And then here, uh, there's some chive seeds that have just gone in a couple of days ago. Um, these are all tomatoes in various stages here. The ones at the back there in the three little pots are obviously ahead of the rest. And then here I've got um, there's some uh, flower mix seeds um, which haven't germinated yet in three of these trays. There's some basil which is coming on nicely. There's some pansy seeds um, which have only just recently been planted. They haven't germinated yet. Um, in that tray there are some carrots. Um, I often start carrots in trays, although I know it, it you know, it can um, cause them, you know, to, to fork um, and you get knobbly forked carrots. Um, so they are really better if you plant them straight into the ground. So uh, once these are big enough to transplant, I'm going to pop them into the middle of the raised bed there. One row will be these that are already um, growing and then I will do another row next to them, um, direct sowing straight into the into the bed there. That uh, row there is leek um, and when they're ready, I'm going to plant them outside. And then there's some more flowers, they're Californian poppy, which haven't germinated yet. Um, so that is the polytunnel. And this is just outside the polytunnel. This is my sort of makeshift compost heap. It's literally just um, four pallets tied together with string. And we fill it up with the chicken bedding when we've mucked out the chickens, which is shredded paper, which I bring home from work. Again, it's recycling. We shred a lot of paper. So I bring it home, it goes under the chickens, uh, it makes fabulous bedding for them. And then when I muck them out, it comes over onto the compost heap. Once that's rotted down, we can use it to put back in the ground. Here is my pumpkin pallet. This is a bit of an experiment to see how they will fare. So I'm quite interested myself to, to see how these develop and grow. And then here, this is rhubarb that I'd grown from seed. Um, it was in a pot in the polytunnel and I've recently planted it out here. And then here are outdoor beds. Um, I have onion and garlic in this bed and at the bottom I will be planting out the leek when they're ready. And then here we're just starting to prepare the area um, to get another two beds in there. Um, I do need to do some weeding. And then that far end that you can see that has been mowed, strimmed, scarified, and we have recently planted wildflower uh, meadow seeds. I'm hoping to have a really pretty little miniature wildflower meadow there. That's the plan, so watch this space. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed what you see, and I hope that um, I may have inspired, as I say, just one person. Um, I hope you enjoyed my little tour. Thank you, as I say, for watching. If you like what you see, please do consider subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up. And if you do subscribe, hit that bell to get notifications and you'll be able to not just look back at, at some of the videos I've already made, but follow our journey and watch um, as, as we move on and produce and grow our own, our own food and veg. And, you know, what are you guys waiting for? You know, get planting, get out there, get some seeds, get them in, get them watered and enjoy, enjoy the journey of growing. Thanks ever so much for watching. I hope wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you're having a wonderful time. Um, feel inspired, get out there and get growing. Thank you very much. And again, a massive thank you to Liz and to Erica and for everybody out there on all those other channels that are so encouraging and supporting. Have a great day. Thank you for watching. Bye.